In this section, I will cover some of the equipment you will need, including canoes, personal gear, a packing list, paddles, portage pads, and barrels. There are a lot of options of different types of canoes to take on your trip. Slight variations in shape and design of your craft will change its performance. I named my boat the Beagle. It's a handmade 16-foot Kevlar boat with wood gunnels made by the Hemlock Canoe Company. The other boat on this trip is a 17-foot Old Town Tripper made of Royal X. The Beagle is a much faster boat in the flat water and a lot lighter on the portages too, but it is also a much more expensive boat. Another option is to rent your canoes from the great folks at Le Domain. Whatever boat you decide on, make sure it is large enough to hold all your gear, light enough to portage, and rugged enough to stand up to the abuse of getting dragged over rocks. Let's show you exactly what we got. We got neoprene socks. Yep, they're essential. These are great to wear with your water shoes in the boat. To go with those is your water shoes. I have a pair of Merrill barefoot shoes. I have Keens. Don't use it a lot because we go to bed or before the sun sets is a head. Really, really important is a good pair of sunglasses. Mine broke. These are ones I found on the portage. I like to keep the sunscreen ready all the time and I like to keep some bug spray. There's plenty of choices out there. I use DEET. DEET works best. DEET works best. You can't go out there without brushing your teeth. You gotta stay hydrated, so a water bottle. Also a little tape around the Nalgene. Yeah, and then you got it when you need it. I also put tape around my coffee mug. Bandanas, I love them. If you were to ask me my most important piece of gear, I'd probably say a bandana. These are for everything. Another thing that you might not think of, but is really nice, is a pack towel. I keep my knife. This is just a little Gerber knife. Uh, Kelsey, I believe, has a Leatherman. Leatherman. Yep, so a good knife is important. I also keep a lighter on me because we always cook on a fire every night. Many, many functions. Rain gear. There's a lot of different brands out there. She has a North Face one. I have a Patagonia one. Um, these are great for the rain. They're also good for the bugs. They're also good for the wind. And it's also your coat if you get cold. You can put it over the top. And we also carry a pair of rain pants. Got to keep the sun off. You could use a baseball cap or you could get a fancy big brimmed cap like Kelsey has with her stampede strap ready to go just in case a big gust of wind comes along. Which it will. Which it will at some point. Um, and when you get to camp and it might be a little chilly, the quickest way to warm up is to put a nice warm hat on. PFD, personal flotation device. And you also do want to have a whistle on there. Keep that ready in case there's an emergency. Um, now it's down to the everyday wear. This is what I wear in the boat and in camp all the time. Um, I love this shirt. I probably loved it to death. She's got holes in it. What you're looking for here is a 100% nylon long sleeve shirt. Well, yeah, mine has UV ray protection in it, which mm -hmm. when you're as fair as I am is really important. Yeah, you don't have to use quite as much sunscreen if you layer that on. Um, and also I'm wearing my pants. These pants have had a lot of love. I'm actually down to one leg. This one ripped off in the middle of the trip, so I may do but a pair of lightweight nylon long pants. And you were saying color is important? I think a light color is better to go with. It can get chilly in Verandre at times, so you do want to be prepared for that with some warm layers. Um, I have on my top warm layer, my thin one. Uh, this is made by Ibex. It's 100% wool. This is 100% merino wool icebreakers. Also with a hood, a hood's important because you can add that with your hat. Smart wool, long underwear. Yeah, fleece top. Um, this is made by Melanzana. I really highly recommend this brand. If I get really cold, I can wear all my layers and really put them on. Put my, this layer on, my fleece on, my raincoat on, my warm hat, and then I'm kind of ready for Arctic temperature. Oh, and there's a few feminine yeah. items that we don't have as well. As a woman, you probably would like to bring two sports bras. It gets sweaty, um, sunscreeny. It's good to be able to switch them out. Um, also, you could bring a bathing suit top and that could double as like a sports bra and something to swim. I have one pair of underwear. These are non-cotton and I actually just wear these to sleep in basically and that's about it. I have two pairs to sleep in. Mm -hmm. Right now we're not wearing any underwear, believe it or not. Uh, down to the feet. Yep, all you need is one pair of warm wool socks. Mine are smart wool, really thick ones. 
you got a pair of Darn Tough. I really like the Darn Tough brand. They do have a 100% warranty. If you get a hole ever, you can send it back and we'll get you a new pair. Kelsey and I are also very particular about our sleeping and we both like our pillows. Uh, mine is made by Big Angus. You can flate this and then I actually fold it in half to make a nice thick one. And mine came from an airplane. I took it and it works perfectly. Yeah, it just has the right amount of comfort. You also need your sleeping bag. I have a 20 degree bag to go with mine. It's probably a little overkill, but that's fine. I'd rather be a little warm. And you need your Thermalite, uh, Thermarest Insulite pad to sleep upon. Uh, that's it. That's all you really need for a canoe trip in Verendre. Uh, we'll put a packing list in the video as well. Feel free to download that or take a look at it. Um, but now you can feel at ease. This is what you need. It's everything you need and nothing you don't. We really don't feel like there's something that we're missing out of this whole list. And a book. I didn't bring a book, but Kelsey likes to read a book in a nice, beautiful place. Take a look at my packing list, including personal clothes, kitchen equipment, and a comprehensive look at all the gear necessary for a comfortable canoe journey. If you would like a copy of these lists, just pause the movie and take a screenshot. This option right here is your top of the line model. Um, I spent a good bit of money on this. This is a Whiskey Jack paddle. It's made entirely of cedar with some fiberglass protection on the blade. It's really light. It's really pretty. It's a bent shaft um, and I love it. This is my ace paddle that I use all the time. I go on a lot of canoe trips, so for me it was worth it to spend the money on this blade. Uh, a bent shaft paddle, as you can see the angle of this comes down the shaft is here and then the blade comes off, is a really nice thing when you're on flat water. It really increases the efficiency of your paddling and keeps that blade in a vertical position as you take your stroke. Um, it's also really light, so I'm not wasting any energy pulling it out of the water as well. And this is just a really nice paddle. So if you want to go to the top level, take a look at Whiskey Jack. The people there are great. They custom made this one for me with a longer shaft because I do have a long torso. So I really like a little bit longer of a paddle than what's, customly, or what's commonly made. If this isn't an option for you, you don't want to spend a lot of money, maybe the cheapest option for you is to just go and make a paddle. Um, so this is a canoe paddle that I made, and it's made of ash that I laminated together to make the blade here, and then this is a solid piece of ash for the shaft, and then some more for the handle. Now this is a big kind of heavy paddle. Ash is a solid wood. It doesn't break, but it is heavy. So this um, is more of a workhorse, and Kelsey's been using this paddle the whole trip. She's fallen in love with it. I've had other friends use this on long trips and they've fallen in love with it too. It's a great paddle and it's just really cool to see it going in the water and go, oh yeah, I made that paddle. Now a third option, if you don't want to buy a fancy paddle or make one, is to just go buy a standard paddle. This is an aluminum paddle with a plastic coating around it. It's made by Carlisle. Um, there's many different companies. Bending Branches make some pretty nice paddles. You can get a paddle at L.L. Bean as well. There's different options out there. But this one is great. This is kind of my uh, beefy, can't be broken, um, burly paddle. And this is my third paddle. I always have three in the boat, one for bow, one for stern, and one extra. I also use this extra paddle whenever we're in a whitewater situation. Without that bench shaft, I can really get my draw strokes in, I can get my cross draws in, and I can also push off of any rocks that might be coming at me, and I don't worry about beating up the paddle at all. This paddle is also great as a walking stick. Um, my canoe partner, Kelsey, she uses this when she's carrying the load on portages to help keep her balanced because the barrels kind of get you a little bit wobbly. So this paddle can really do it all, and it's also my backup if something were to happen to my other paddle. Cool. Well, that's it for you guys. You know, there's lots of different options out there for canoe paddles. There's aluminum straight shaft. There's, hey, make your own paddle. Hey, and then go get the nicest paddle on the market, which I think is the Whiskey Jack paddle. Um, whatever you get, I'm sure you're going to fall in love with it and really treat it well. Portage pads. Yep, this is padding right here for the portages, and this goes right on the center yoke of the boat. So when you pick the boat up, hey, 75 pounds, you want wood straight on bone? No, 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 you want a little bit of padding. So this rests on your shoulders, not that wood. And you got a pair of them, I just have one right here. 
Now, I like this one a lot here. I actually have two different types of portage pads. If you look at the other boat, there's a different style on there. And that one's made of aluminum that kind of has a little hammock that hangs in it. That one's a little pricier, a little bit lighter. Um, but this one's my favorite. This one is what I put on my boat. You can see I have the other one on there. And uh, what I like about this is right here, this. Oh yeah, that, can you see that? That's some squish. It's a real simple design. It's a piece of wood on the bottom, some foam, and then some leather over the top. I notice I don't see a lot of people out here, but the people I do see, I notice they're not using any pads. They're just using the wood on the shoulders. And they're like, oh, portages are so horrible. How many portages do you do today? Oh, I can't do portages. I'll tell you what, put a couple of these pads on here. It doesn't feel so bad. And you'll enjoy it a little bit more. You'll start to smell the earth as you go around you and really get relaxed and get in the place of just breathing and walking carrying this heavy load. Canoe barrels, here they are, this is them. Um, I consider them an essential piece of your canoe camping equipment list. This is where I keep all my food and I wanna keep it safe, I wanna keep it dry, I wanna keep it away from the animals and this serves all those purposes perfectly. Back in the day, when people were going on extended canoe trips, voyagers of the day, they would carry these big, heavy, wooden boxes called wanigans. And they'd have a leather strap that went over the back and went over your forehead and you would tump it and you would carry all of your food and supplies that way. But we've come a long way since then. Someone had this brilliant idea to take old used barrels from olive and pickle stores to make a watertight container for all their food on canoe trips. And this is how it's kind of progressed to today. I have two different types of barrels for you right here. This is big barrel, um, also called sticker barrel. And I have two of these actually. I've only brought one on the trip with me today. But uh, the way I got this barrel is I got online and I went on eBay and I looked at an olive store and this was a used barrel for 15 bucks from an olive store. Bought it on eBay, they mailed it to me, and when I opened it up, it even had a little bit of uh, olive juice still in there, some of the vinegar smell. Cleaned it all out, and then I went to a yard sale, and I picked up an external frame pack, an old one, for about a dollar. So we're a total of 15 bucks on this thing. I know it's expensive. Um, and I stripped off the uh, pack part of the external frame pack, and then figured out a way to lash on the barrel and strap it onto this frame pack nice and tight. Voila, I have myself a great canoe barrel. Now it's big, it's heavy, when you fill it all the way up with food, this thing can weigh 70 pounds, so you gotta be careful, it takes two people to load it normally, um, and when you're walking with it, you can be really tipsy sometimes. That's big barrel. Um, right over here I have baby barrel, and Baby Barrel is actually one that is made specifically for canoe tripping. So if you go on Google and you search canoe barrels, there's basically two brands that are going to pop up for you. They're the same thing. They have slight variations in their frames, but I think their barrels are exactly the same. Um, and this barrel here is really nice. I've just recently gotten this one, so it's, this is its first big canoe trip. Uh, but it's much more manageable as its size. You can carry it as a front load rather than this one you have to carry on your back. So this will free you up to carry another backpack on your back. Now what's different about my two barrels is their closure system. It's the same system, but it's a different material. This is the new one here. It has this nice lid, and inside here is a little bit of a rubber gasket. That seals tight around this plastic lip. So when you put that on, and then you're gonna slide this metal bit all the way around that edge so it sits in that groove, and then you can snap it tight and that will not come open uh, and keeps everything safe in there. Now the one I got from the olive store that I've loved, actually I've loved it to death a little bit, is a little bit broken. The part here is made of plastic, not metal. So when this one snaps open, maybe a hundred times I've done it, right along this bit, the plastic cracked and this piece came off. We were clever enough to drill a little hole, tie on some P-cord and fix this so it still works, um, but she's not in the same shape she used to be. It's never leaked even with this fix on it still though. And this works the same way, has the same kind of lid that fits on top with the rubber gasket. The lids also make great cutting boards or surfaces for maybe you're doing lunch and you want to put your food out there on that. And they also make pretty decent seats if you want to sit them around the campfire and sit on them. Um, that's basically it, canoe barrels. You know, if you're going on a long canoe trip in Verendre or anywhere, uh, you wanna keep your food safe and dry. This is the best solution out there. 
Uh, one other option, if you don't want to buy a barrel, you can also rent them. I know that Verandre rents two size barrels. I believe they're about $10 a day for the frame as well as the barrel. Um, and if you're only going out for maybe three days, it might make sense to just rent a barrel from them. If you're doing a 15 day trip like us, you definitely want to buy your barrels because it's a better cost that way. Great, well thanks for watching. Um, I hope you like this Guide You Outdoors video. If you did, remember to check out our YouTube page and like us on Facebook.